we got Amber Rose. Amber Rose recently was on a podcast and somehow some way the conversation of religion came up and all of this kind of stuff. I don't know how that came up. This is not going to be a diatribe on religion, but more so just, you know, analyzing her and what she had to say. So they asked her if she believed in God. And, you know, uh, you know, this is basically what she had to say. Spoiler alert, she doesn't believe in God. But here was her delivery on her opinion as to why she doesn't believe in God. Do, do I, I believe, believe in, in God? God? Mm-hmm. What do you mean by God? Like, like a, God. God. Yeah. Like, like like a, a higher, higher power? power? Sure. That, that like, was, was like, like, here's people and here's earth, earth and here's the planets? planets? No. No? no. So, so what do you, you so, so if you don't, you don't believe, believe in God, God what do you, do you exactly, exactly believe in? in then? I, I more so believe, believe in science than like, like an, 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 an invisible entity, entity named God, God was like, like let, let there be light. light. Mm. It, just it just seems, seems far fetched to, to me. Really? So, so do you ever have you ever been to church before? Yeah. When you go to church, you don't be feeling you be like, damn, y'all be talking like, I don't believe Jesus like died and like came back to life for my sins. I just believe that's crazy. That's all right. So that'll probably that'll probably rub a lot of people who do believe that the wrong way. Um I don't think it should because I think that's just an opinion that you don't agree with. So it shouldn't make you mad. Uh, but, you know, a lot of people are sensitive these days, and so they just get offended by stuff. But I would imagine people who do believe in God and do believe that Jesus died on the cross for their sins probably are offended by what she had to say. Uh, I don't, You know, whether you believe in God or not, to me, is irrelevant to this. What I kind of want to talk about, what I find interesting is that uh, I think that there is a correlation between someone who has conducted her life in the way that Amber Rose has and the fact that she would make that kind of statement. So, you know, you can believe in God or not, I don't care. You know, you can believe in Jesus or not, I don't care. But I'm just looking at Amber Rose and, you know, the the her being the champion for slut shaming, the slut walks, the Kanye West relationship, the tattoo on her forehead, the, the uh, embracing of modern promiscuous culture, you know, uh, you know, uh, being a part of this whole thottish industry. She was basically one of the uh, originators of like thottish behavior, thought culture and the glorification of it, like the mainstreaming of it to where we say, you know, it used to be some, it used to be a situation where we said that's a certain segment of our culture. We acknowledge that it exists, but, you know, we can all pretty much agree that in the grand scheme of things, probably best to not emulate that behavior. Then it slowly transitioned to it's growing, but we still don't want to emulate it. That transitioned to, okay, now we're accepting it, but we don't want to emulate it. But now it's just full blown. We should emulate it because that's the cool thing to do. It's the right thing to do. Well, men have been, you know, whores for all of existence. So why can't women, why can't we embrace our, you know, why can't we embrace our inner, you know, our inner, to use her term, you know, um, you know, slut, you know, don't slut shame me because I want to live this way. And it's all to the good. But what I find fascinating is the fact that, you know, this is a person who has championed all of these things and she also doesn't believe in God. I think that that's an interesting correlation. Uh, not that I think you should. Again, let me reiterate. I'm not saying you should believe in God. I don't care. Believe in whatever you want to believe in. We still cool in a rocket at the end of the day. You can believe whatever you want. But I think it's an interesting correlation between how her public facing persona has played out and the fact that she makes statements like that, if any of that made sense. Yeah, I get what you're saying. And me personally, I was thinking more along the lines of the reason why this, she doesn't believe in God. Because if you don't believe in a God, in God, then you also don't believe in the devil. So it's it's a hand in hand exchange. You you don't believe in the divinity aspect of things because if you believe in if you believe in God, then you have to believe in the devil kind of a thing. And so not necessarily, but generally speaking. And so for for her, if she does away with religion, then it kind of gives her an excuse to do what she does. If you are already living in a, a sense of shame and a sense of, 
oh, you know, uh, everything that the Bible says about what I do, I'm going to hell. I don't think I'm going to hell. I don't believe in God. I don't believe in the, I don't believe in these power dynamics because what they're suggesting is the life that I'm living, I'm doomed to hell. Right. And so she she's since she's not comfortable with that, then she's not comfortable with religion and with God and all of these concepts. So I think that it's interesting that you say that because I think that's the very reason why she doesn't because of the guilt that she has, whether consciously or subconsciously, of the lifestyle that she lives. Um, back in my thoughting days, uh, when I was out there just trying to play the field and get numbers and just have a team and all this other stuff, and I was out there just thoughting it out, um, I was feeling um, you lose yourself in that. There's, there's not really any redeeming qualities outside of having good stories to tell. The, the, the main thing that you develop from that is more trauma. You know, you, you, you date, you date people, you deal with people, you, you don't build genuine connections. You really don't trust the people you're around. So there's all kinds of factors that play into living such a lifestyle. And I realized that the way that I could achieve such a lifestyle and be a superstar in that game is I have to be out of my mind. And so for her who has taken on this persona of living this lifestyle of being the queen slut, and I'm not calling her a slut. She calls herself she calls a slut. Herself, or a slut right. walker. Yeah. So I'm not trying to be disrespectful. This is what she coined herself as. And so when you live a life where you're a self-proclaimed slut, then I'm pretty sure she has, um, you know, escapades and all these other uh, situations where she's just doing whatever, doing whoever or whatever. And so by living that life, it, there's not a, like a, a shame because you believe in a biblical text. There's a shame of I don't have a genuine connection in my life. It's a shame because um, I am, am I really worth it to somebody? And then when you have all of these uh, things floating around your head, they cause stress, they cause anxiety and all this other stuff. So honestly, I don't think, and, and this is the problem with, and I'm not trying to be grandiose or nothing like that, but this is the problem with thought now is that what it does is uh, you take on, and I'm, I, you know, you, you hear people in the church or whatever, and they say, oh, when you have sex with this person, you're sharing spirits and all this stuff. Me, I personally think that what, what they're getting at with those things is that you take on various uh, levels of stressors that you may not be aware that you're taking on by living a life of not being complete or feeling complete. So with those things, you develop these stressors, you, you start thinking of all kinds of ways to justify the lifestyle you're living. And then if everybody around you is like, God said, God said, God said, and then you go, ah, but then living this life of sin the woman goes or in this case amber rose she i think she takes a step back and go hey look i will not feel this level of stress if i don't believe i'm going to hell and i'm not going to hell because there is no deity above me that's going to send me there so i think that her thing her, honestly this whole exchange is honestly kind of a revealing way to me that she feels uh a shame low-key about the life she lives uh, so uh, psychoanalysis there but I think yeah 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 that's no that's an interesting way to put it it's what you know like I, I wonder like you know the chicken or the egg question and I don't know the answer to this question like what came first um her amoral tendencies or her mm -hmm. lack of faith like right. you have to wonder which one which one because clearly one of those things created the other mm -hmm. so it's like which one came first like I find it difficult to believe it, it, you know, it, it's like when we have the whole men and women dating and relationship conversation, and we talk about women being, you know, women lacking in work ethic or lacking the desire to self improve because they think that their presence is enough. And so, the question that I always have is okay, well, are they genetically predisposed to be in that way, or are there certain environmental stressors that facilitated an environment in which they became that way? And I tend to lean on the side of 
you know, nature versus nurture. And so I do think that some people just kind of are what they are. And it's, it's interesting to think about, but I do think that there's a correlation between how she's lived her life and the fact that she makes those types of statements. And I don't think that her lack of belief in any kind of religion uh, preceded her nature. I think her nature preceded. I think, I think, I think you're correct. I think her, I think her nature preceded the lack of faith and being able to say, well, I don't believe this sort of thing allowed her to reconcile her behavior. Yeah. They, 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 um, they. yeah, yeah. It's just interesting to see, cause you know, it is, it, it's, it's interesting to see somebody actually say that, you know, on, on camera like that. But also I kind of think that you might be giving her too much credit. I don't think she's knowingly that psychologically aware <laughs> <laughs> of what it is that she's doing and what it means. I just think she's just is. I think she just is. Um, I'm not saying that you're, I think what you're saying is right. I just don't think she's cognizant of that. That's my I, personal. I don't, I don't think she's cognizant that way. And, and that's fair. And I think her thing is more of a, yeah, I think hers is more reactionary of people coming to her saying, you're going to hell for doing this. You're going to hell yeah, for you're going to hell. So. And then, yeah, and then yeah. there's a response of, what? No, I ain't going to hell. Yeah, yeah. It's it's a, it's a fight or flight thing. It's like when yeah. when she was jumping from rapper to rapper and 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 you know making her rounds, being an industry slower, and people were criticizing her for it. How was she able to kind of make herself feel better about that? Okay, well let me embrace my slutness. So there's nothing you can say to hurt me because I know that I'm a slut. Rather, what I'm going to try to do is circumvent the system and make being a slut okay. Uh, make being a slut cool. Make being a slut something that you should aspire to. I'm going to deconstruct our traditional notions of what constitutes slutness, so that we can be just so that we can be just as okay with calling a woman a slut as we are with calling, you know, a man a pimp or a hustler or whatever. You know, the, the, the two things are should be glorified and praised in the same way. At least that's the mentality of people like her. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Yeah.